G'day viewers, Jeff from McPhee's Gardening Melbourne, Australia. Today's topic is about communicating with the customer and how that can make a profit to our business. When we first meet our customer, first impressions are important. I've explained in previous videos about quoting is that we give them a time, we will be there, we will rock up uh, professionally, we'll rock up confidently, our presentation will be great and we'll then sort out what the customer requires and we'll solve their problem. We'll give them a quote, we'll either give it there and then or we'll take it home and we'll email them back the next day or that, that night, but we will get back to them straight away. The longer you leave it, the less likely you are to get the job. The customer's already formed opinion of you when, when you roll up in that first 10 to 20 seconds. And if they like you, you're on your way. So what we're trying to do is we're going to develop a relationship with that customer, okay? We've got a price for you, and secondly, we've got a schedule when we can do the job for you if you agree that the price is okay. Now, once you've established, once you've got that customer, we are now going to work out a, a program to communicate with that customer and we'll develop a relationship. Now, we're going to do that by always being prompt and reliable, of course, and doing a great job. Even if you're a mow and blow guy, which is nothing wrong with that, but in the winter time or the slow times, if you're trying to upsell your products, this is the perfect time to communicate with the customer. So when you're mowing your lawn and you're looking around, you'll see that the roses may doing, and you'll say to your customer, this is Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, X, uh, your roses are due in July. Now I can do that for you. I can take all the clippings away, I can uh, mulch because it needs some mulch and while I'm here I can also repair the reticulation system or improve it or, or put one in maybe for the summer period. Now some customers say oh great just, just go ahead and do it when you can you know which is good or some customers may need a price. Now what I'll do is I'll give them a quotation, I'll give them a fixed price and I'll say look it'll cost you so many dollars to do this particular task. Now when you're working out the price because it's a customer, even if it's a long-term customer, you can fall in for the trap of, because you like them, you try to do it at mate's rates. I try to avoid that. Every price I do, whether it's a new customer or an existing customer, I'll always use a standard calculation. So I have my fixed hourly rate that, that I've worked out, and I've shown a previous video of, of how I do that, and then I'll apply that to how long I think it'll take, any materials I'll need, tipping fees and time taken to, to take the stuff away and then I'll work that out and that'll be the price I'll tell the customer. Now that will be the same price if I worked out, if I looked at a job that I've never seen a customer before, I always work out the same price. And it's likewise when you're mowing a lawn, for example, you might do Joe's at $80 and down the road you've got bills and you charge him 100 because you don't like him because he's your real stubborn coot. So what happens, you think, oh well, I've fixed him, but what happens, those two guys will talk and Bill will talk to Joe and say, you're only charging uh, him $80 and you're charging me 100 what's going on? So just be careful and that's why I like to be consistent in my pricing, which is very important. So upselling is so important to your business and that's one way you're going to make a profit out of it. Now the next thing is, are you scared of losing your customer? Now, you can fall in a big trap here that you're starting off, especially in your early days, and you're scared to lose the customer because if you lose the customer, you're not, there's no income coming in. So what happens when you're scared? You lose your confidence. And what happens is you're frightened to put the prices up because you might lose them. Or they might ask you to do a job and they'll ask you to give a quote. And because you're scared of losing them, you'll start doubting yourself and you'll say, Oh, 100 is a bit dear, I might just drop it down a bit. And you become, you know, your confidence is gone. Straight away the customer's gonna pick that up and they're gonna be honing in on that for sure, the smart ones anyway. But the other thing is you're not doing yourself any favors because you're frightened of losing them. So what I try to do is you try to turn that around, turn it around to make the customer scared of losing you. Because you're going to be a asset to them. How, how, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to be prompt, I'm going to be reliable, I'm going to be professional, and I'm going to communicate well with that customer. 
So that customer will rely on me to have their garden at its best without them even have to worry about it. Things like, once I've mowed a blade, I might fix up a, a rose that's uh, falling over or little bits and pieces that, that are in the garden that, that I'll tend to. Rather than just getting in, mowing and going, I'll treat that garden as my own. Sure, they'll be paying for that and I'll communicate that with them as well. But what you're trying to do is establish that relationship so that you are valuable to them because they don't want to go and get someone else. If they're happy with their gardening and their lawns that have done lovely and everything's all presented well, they want, don't want to go through the process of getting someone else because you've developed that trust. And that's the most important thing is to develop the trust for the customer so that you're not going to um, be scared of them losing them. They're going to be scared of losing you. So you've got it back into your court and then you're dictating, well not so much dictating, but you're, you've got control of the situation. And they are the customers that you really look after and you really communicate well with, which is, to me, is one of the most important aspects of running the business. So to wrap it up, communication is probably taken for granted really. I mean, we just go in there, we just to, you know, do our job and have a, have a, a, a chat to the customer and, and away we go. Now, you can fall in the trap of getting, uh, talking a lot of non-business uh, aspects and, and that's fine, keeping, keeping, every, you know, keeping customer happy. But when I'm talking to the customer, I focus in on upselling what I can do for them rather than talk about, you know, oh my, how's the kids going and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you, that's a very brief part. Uh, because I, I want to use that time uh, to make some money later on. And that means that I'll talk to the customer and I'll say, listen, just have a look at this um, little pilly hedge. Now, we've got a little bit of problem with the little bugs chewing them, so we need to apply some chemicals to, to address that problem. And also, at a later stage, we'll need to feed it up and, and, and prune the hedge and explain to them and show them what, how good it can look. So all the time when you do talk to the customer, a little bit of idle chat is good, but remember, you're on a um, non-billable time when you're doing this. You've only got so many hours in the day that you, that you can make money, so use those talking with the customer uh, and, and hone in on what you can do for them. I, I found that's really worked well for me over the years. Alrighty, if you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't before, and please share the video around if you, if you can. And thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.